All right, great. Well, here we go. It is uh, Monday for Monday, Valar AM on 822. Hard to believe it is August the 22nd already. And uh, it's amazing how fast time moves. Um, seems like we were just starting out this year. Here we are in August. Before I get started on the training call, I want to tell you that um, Christine and I are getting ready to travel again. And uh, we have a really, really packed September between, you know, we're going to Vail for the trip and uh, Pittsburgh, Vail, Philadelphia, and then Guatemala, and then back here to uh, Pittsburgh, and then back to um, Tampa in October. So we've got a crazy busy week. So I have some openings um, in the Pittsburgh area to do HHSs between like the maybe 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, somewhere in that neighborhood, 18th, 19th, not even like, yeah, maybe the 18th and 19th. So somewhere in that week I have availability and then maybe after after our show, we could get a few more in before we go in early October. So just so you know, if you're in the area up there and you wanna do something, reach out to Christina and try to get something on the calendar, okay. All right, so here we go. So what I want to talk to you about is the new tool that's coming out, and that is very exciting. It's the new HHS video, and I just got to um, take a look at the rough cut of it. Um, they're still working on the color and things like that, but it looks really, really good. It's approximately, um, when I looked at it, it's about 40 minutes, okay? So some of you guys are used to my 12-minute video. It's going to be a... Um, you know, an adjustment to your timing on these things. So, you know, how do you deal with the timing of it? Number one is I would say, um, look at it first and make sure that you want to use every section of it. All right. So you may want to earmark, like these are the timestamps that I want to use. And these are the ones I don't want to use to speed it up. Like, Hey, you may be really, really good at, at teaching on air. Um, but like for most of us, we have an air and service pro. So when we do an HHS, it's easy to, to talk about air. So you may skip the air section, but use the intro and use the uh, the water and the laundry because most of us don't have, you know, a lot of people don't have the, I mean, like I have laundry, but it's hooked to my wall, right? Um, so, you know, I, at the end of my show, I take people over to the laundry area and I let them look in the laundry room and see how it works and they can smell the water and all that stuff when it's coming out. So maybe you use those sections of it or maybe use the whole entire thing because it's really, really well done. All right, so this is going to be a game changer. All right, I mean, it's literally going to be a game changer if you use it. So the key is, is you're going to have to, to make sure that you're using it and uh, using it effectively. Then in the end, Pastor Eric does a, a close on, it's basically on the value of the product that we have. So he he's more of a retail closer. Um, you know, you know, buy this product for $5,500 or whatever, where I'm more of a partnership uh, closer. I like to close on the business side. Um, and I hopefully I, they recorded me doing it, but I don't know if it's it maybe got lost on the on the cutting room floor or something. But um, but either way, you guys have the option of whenever you get to that end, allow Pastor Eric to build the value on the product and get up to that $7,000 for the for the whole pro pack. But then you have an option of telling your, your guests, listen, we can, um, we can take this time to say, all right, we're going to um, give you the option of joining a partner with us in the business and getting $7,000 value for $2,600 with a pro pack. And then you can throw in all the extras. Okay. So, you know, for me, it's the $75 in, in uh, nutritional products that you're going to get the free H2 fuel bottle you're going to get. And then if, and if you're doing the pet refresh, you could use that then. Now, you know, with a pet refresh, you're paying for that. Okay. So you got to remember that you're paying for that. So you use it to your discretion. If you want to lead off with that and say, everybody who comes to my event gets a free pet refresh, just to build your numbers up, go for it. If you don't want to do that and you, and you want to use it as a an incentive to get a sale, then you can add that on when somebody actually buys a product. You know, look, if you show up at my, my show and you buy anything, I'll give you a pet refresh. I mean, they can buy a, a bottle of recoup or something like that. So you can set that parameter of how do you use that pet refresh as a, as a hook. 
you know, that to me, that creates sense of urgency. Listen, if I'm closing my party today, um, I need to know, are you in, or are you out? Right. Are you in, or are you out? If you want to, if you want to move forward, do you want to buy something? And then, uh, because the reason why is because I want to get you that free H2 fuel bottle and I'm throwing in that pet refresh, which is going to cover a whole room of your house, you know, um, so that's very important that you figure out your strategy with the pet refresh. And I know uh, the other thing too is, is like when you do a show, we did a show at our house on, uh, on Saturday and, um, you know, I didn't get the attendance that I was looking for. Obviously people were busy and things come up. So what we did was we, we, we used my 12 minute video to do virtuals. Um, and I would, uh, uh, but listen, this new 40 minute video is going to be the difference maker because with the 12 minute video, it's good because it does a full product overview. And, you know, we spent money on that. We spent time on that. So use it. But with the 40 minute video, what I like about it is, is like, if you have somebody who, you know, you're, look, I want to get somebody to my show, right? Like, let's say I'm trying to um, get my numbers up and um, like, let's say you have, you need your four guests, right? What I would do is I was going on like messenger on Facebook and I find people that I know <clears throat> that I haven't talked to about the business yet. And I'll say to them, listen, I need a guest for an event that I'm doing. There's literally no obligation at this point. I just, cause the people comment are the ones that are most likely going to join or buy. And the ones that are online, maybe, maybe they won't, maybe they won't. And so I would just say no obligation. All I need you is watch this video for me. I need your email address. I need your phone number. I need that. I need to make sure that you, you plugged in. I need to know when you finish watching this so that I can contact you to give you the specials that we're doing for, for this event. Okay. And, um, and so that's what was locking in my virtual guests. You know, I can't just say here, watch this and that's it. No, I had to say, you know, so my invite was, was very, um, you know, like non, uh, I guess no pressure, you know, like, so I say, listen guys, if, if, or listen, so-and-so, <laughs> I know I haven't talked to you in, in years and I haven't seen you in years, but um, my company's given me the ability to give away a lot of free technology. All I need is a seat in a chair. And by you being in that chair, whether it's here or virtually, it gives me uh, a bunch of free product um, to help me with my business and the ability to give you a bunch of free product if you participate. Um, no obligation whatsoever. So like I sent it to one lady, and um, she comes back and she's like, oh, Mark, I, I like I like what I see, but I'm not in a position right now. I'm trying to buy a house. You know, she's moving all the stuff got, you know, her job got moved or whatever relocation. And I said, that's fine. I never asked you to do anything. I just needed you to watch it for me. And thank you so much for watching it for me. It means the world to me that you took that time out of your busy schedule to actually watch what I had to show you. OK. So there's literally no obligation. And then you're just putting that, that, that um, you know, in that train of thought now, right? So now they're, they're seeing something that now they're, they're getting exposed to what you're doing without any pressure. And when there's no pressure, that's when people are gravitating towards you to find out why is it that this person had me watch this video and they're now not really pressuring me. Now, of course, I give her the time, you know, I say, listen, I'm closing this party in 24 hours um 24 to 48 hours like i give them a little extra time on the weekend we have five days to turn this stuff in and i mean if it's a, if i do a show on a saturday i'm closing it on a monday all right i don't i mean i don't go by the whole 24 hour thing personally because let's be realistic i can't even put an order in until monday anyway i mean i could do it online but if i need to do stuff through um through uh customer service you know like easy pay and stuff i can't do it till monday anyway so I'll give them a little extra time if it's a Saturday show and say, listen, I'm, I, I need to know by Sunday at eight o'clock because Monday I'm turning all my orders in for the show. So there is that that you have to put that little bit of sales pressure on to say, like, if I don't care if you're interested or not, but if you want the free HD fuel bottle and the pet refresh and all that stuff, I need to know um, as soon as possible. OK, so, you know, hey, look we're getting ready to step into a brand new season in the business because we're moving into the fall. The fall is, is where people come back to life. The summer's where, look, I've been in this industry since I was in my, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old. 
And the summer is always a lag time. Why? Because people get distracted, right? You're busy with, with your vacations, you're, you know, spending time with your family, kids are out of school, everybody's distracted. But the fall is when people literally get re-engaged and get back into it. They, people get re-engaged, they get back into it. And, and it, so we need to be prepared for that. Like prepare for the wave that's about to come, right? Prepare for the, for the success that's about to come into your life for the next, you know, whatever it is. Because I believe that the second half of the year will be greater than the first half of the year. I mean, why wouldn't it be, right? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't the second half be greater than the first half? Okay, so make sure you know your tools, make sure you use your tools. Now, I'm working on uh, revamping an old training I used to do on getting people started off on the right foot, okay? Because I think that is so crucial that you need to know the basics of, of how do you start in a business like this from scratch, from day one, okay? Because you're, day, like I said, I've said this many, many times, your day one may, may be on day 365, right? It, uh, or it may be on day 800, maybe your day one to actually say, I'm, I'm officially stepping into my business. You know, I've had a lot of people in my business who got, I had, I had a person who got into my business almost the same week that I got into it. And I'll give you two examples. Um, and I just, it was crazy because the one guy, uh, I've, I was talking to him the other day and he, in this guy, I, I, didn't, I don't remember when he joined because he didn't join directly under me. He's like on my third or fourth level. And um, he says, hey, do you like the living water? And he's an athlete, you know, or a bodybuilder and different things like that and really into health and wellness. And he goes, I'm just getting tired of buying so much bottled water. And it's all we do. We're always buying bottled water. And I said, well, you know, bottled water is really not good for you. And I was going in through, you know, talking to him about it. And I said, look, I said, you're in the business. I said, what? And he goes, I really want to buy one. And I said, well, go in, log in and buy it. And I said, but the problem is you're going to spend $1,500 on a living water for an extra 500. Why don't you just get a, a whole house pack, right? And, and just bring new life into your business. You don't have laundry. You don't have air. You don't have water. You got a mobile unit, some stuff. So then I said, but you're going to want to re, um, you know, every year you have to go in and you have to like buy, you know, you have to spend like $39 to like reset, right? So every year you spend like 40 bucks to Ballara. And I said, let's go in and get you like reset for the year for your $40, you know, um, commitment. And the way it works, guys, is you spend 40, like right now, if you, if you haven't done it yet, it's not, it's not the end of the world, but you just like, if you make a pay, they're not going to pay you until you go in and do it. So you pay the 40, then they give you $40 product credit. So they're not even, it's like, it's a wash. You know, you pay the 40, go in, buy your subscription with it, you know, buy your product with it and you win. So anyways, I went in to renew this guy and he had started like a week after I started. I mean, here I am two years and almost two years in the business. We started December, 2020. He started, I just started December 13th. he started on December 18th or something like that. And hasn't done anything. But today could be his day. You know, him and his, he just got married. Uh, his wife is interested in, I think they're actually looking to, to move into a new, uh, like a townhouse or something like that. I don't know if they're buying it or renting it or whatever. Um, and so now there's opportunity. He's like, hey, can you come to my house and maybe do a show once we get moved in in, in uh, November? And I said, sure. So, so maybe November is his very first day. So anyways, I'm saying all that to say this. And I had another guy. And what happens with him is, is he, he got in the week I started and then um, he got distracted because his business picked up, right? And then his business started to drop off. I think he lost his job. So he calls me, well, I'm ready to get started. And then all of a sudden he got into a different business and that picked up, right? And then he got distracted again. And, uh, and it's like, he knows he needs to do it. Like he gets in, he's all gung ho. In fact, he actually quit his job one time to go full time in Ballara. And um, he's like, I'm going full time. I'm like, ah, oh, geez, I wouldn't do that because you know you have like four kids and you don't, <laughs> you don't even know what the heck you're doing. But, um, but that was his, his, what he wanted to do. But even then, there's a guy two years in the business hasn't even started yet. When will be his official start date? Okay, so when you actually start, maybe some of you started and then you took the foot off the gas pedal. And sometimes in a business like this, when you take the foot off the gas, 
you got it. You, it's almost like you have to restart to get the momentum rebuilt up again. You know, so it's like this is a like this is a momentum based business. These businesses are all based on momentum, and that's why Christine and I, we get we get pounded and bombarded day after day with new opportunities, and we don't jump on everything that comes down the road. And, and not that they're not good. There may be great opportunities that come along, and a lot of them I know that I look at us making like a lot of money in this thing. But the problem for me is, is that then it, I, if I have to put momentum over here, even if it doesn't look like it, that momentum is going to draw from my momentum that I put two years into for Valara. So, so let's say you've done that. Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you, you jumped onto some other bandwagon somewhere down the road and you realize that it maybe isn't the greatest thing. You know, maybe it's not where Valara is. Because look, I've vetted this company now for we're going on four years, three and a half years or something. And what I realized was, is that we do have one of the greatest opportunities, right? And I say this every week, we have products you can go out and sell. I had Bible school students make $80,000, $90,000 their very first year in the business. You're not going to get that in anything else. If you're selling $20 products, uh, or if you're on an auto ship for $250 a month just to get paid, you're never going to make this type of money in this business because people get burned out of spending money, okay? And I can guarantee you there's people on this call that haven't spent a dime in Valara in months, okay? And they're still in. And it's not, this isn't a business that you have to spend. I can guarantee there's people who, spend a dime in this, who haven't spent a dime in this business in the last year, but they still made eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 this year because they, in December, they bought packs and they're still selling them month to month to month. And so they're not, there's no obligation for them to buy anything. So that's why this is the greatest opportunity. So anyways, let's go. So what I'm looking to do is go back into a jumpstart style training, I, which in my last business, I used to do it every, I think once a month or something like that, I did jumpstart training for brand new people. And, and really that's what I'm revamping. And what I was going into that and looking at it was, you know, what's the reason why you started in your business and write that down. Like, why did you start your business? What, what was your number one motive? Look, we're all here. It's not by accident. Like, why did you choose this business? Number one, and write it out and put it down. Why, why? I know for me, when I saw it, it was to set, set Bible school students free financially. It was like to set the captives free. I, I left everything, moved from Pennsylvania to Florida. My wife and I had no income. I mean, especially when I said I was going to go full-time in school, right? I thought my mom was going to like fall off her dinner table chair whenever we said we were moving. Like, oh my gosh, who's going to pay the bills, right? Because now Christina's in school, I'm in school. We have literally no connections in Florida. Didn't know, we didn't, I knew I have an uncle who lives in Lakeland, all right? And, and he's not hiring me to do anything, right? So when we, when we dropped everything in your life and we moved, we said, okay, we're moving down to, to Tampa. So now I had to figure out how to make a living. What do you do to make a living, right? So I left it all. And I said, hey, as a Bible school student, wouldn't it be great to have a business opportunity that has a product that everybody needs, that everybody wants, so there's a high demand for it? that I could go out and sell one or two of these units a month, whether it's one or two air, one or two water, one or two laundry, one or two steady power, get the people set up in the business, four or five people, even if I'm too busy to go out and sell, I could go out and I could reach out to four or five people and sign them up in the business. And if I could make an extra $2,000 a month, just 2,000 a month and have that 2,000 pay my rent in Florida, then all I need to worry about is my car, my insurance, and a few odds and ends, which I can go out and work two days a week somewhere, three days a week, we can still keep up as a Bible school student. That was my why, right? It was, it was about, you know, it was about being able to do the, the, the call that God put on my wife and I's life, uh, Christina and I's life, without being burdened by trying to, to work, you know, every night of the week. Because Bible school is intense. I mean, if those of you, some of you uh, on this call went through it and you know what I'm talking about. Some of you never did. You don't have a clue what I'm talking about. But it was intense. So that was my reason why. Maybe for you, it's that, you know, hey, I want to I wanna retire, right? Or I want to retire one of us. Let's say if you're a couple and, uh, and one of you got a great job and the other one's working too, but you want to retire one of you. So that you can, you know, you can have that one person home more, or you're not complete. Like to me, I always look at life, you know, especially now I'm getting to like that, the halftime, right? So I'm 45, 46, I can't remember. Um, but I'm at, I'm at halftime, right? I mean, unless I live to be 140, right? But most, you know, <laughs> let's face it, every 10 years, your odds of living longer get less and less, right? So 
I looked at it and I said, well, what's the point? If, if all I did from, from the day I, from I, I, day I turned 16, or actually I started working at like 12 years old, you know, on a farm. So if all I did was from 12 to, to 80 to 90 was just work all day and had no life experiences at all, like never traveled, never, never took, I went out, never did anything, never, never went to the beach, never then really what's the point? So I lived my whole entire life just to punch a clock somewhere and work. Not that that's a bad thing because there's fruit in that, right? There's fruit, it's, you're, you're being fruitful. But at the same time, there should be balance in your life. So maybe that's your reason why, you know? People say, what's to make money? Why, why are you, why do you want to make money? Well, because I want to get out of debt. Why do you want to get out of debt? Because it's stressing me out. Well, there you go. Because you want to take the stress out of your life right? Why did you start it? And then you write that down because every time you want to quit, let's just say, for example, and you dig deep into your why. So if I go deep, deep, deep into my reason why I started my business and I say, well, I just want money. That's not deep enough for me. Why do you want money? Well, because, you know, um, because I have to work uh, my normal job, but then I have to also work an extra job and I'm driving Uber and Lyft and I'm also um, doing DoorDash and stuff like that. And, and my, and my bedroom is rented out as an Airbnb. Okay. So I just want to live a normal life. I'm tired of working all the time, but why? Well, cause I want to spend more time with my, with my son, right? I want to give him the ability to be homeschooled. You know, I want to make sure that he has experiences that I, maybe I didn't have. So then you start to dig deep, deep, deep into that. Why? So the day you decide to quit and go chase after some other um, business or, or to just give up on your dreams, then you need to walk into your son's room, open up the door and say, Hey, Johnny, here's the deal. You're not going to be homeschooled anymore. Cause I quit. I'm a loser. All right. And, and then let him deal with you because that's how deep your why has to go. Hey, Johnny, I know you really love, love to go to the park, but I, you know what? I got to work double time today because I'm a quitter. I quit. I quit on my dream. When you attach your why to something that's deeper than just making extra money, the odds of you walking away from your why are going to be so much um, less, right? It's going to be so much less of you leaving it because it's deeper now. You know, I want to spend more time with my wife the older we get, right? I don't want to just see her in passing like, hey, honey, how's it going? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've, we've lived years of our lives like that, you know, where I'm, I'm in school when I was in uh, culinary school. I was in school all morning and I worked at a restaurant all night and I saw my wife. I don't even think I even saw her for a year, right? Because she worked as a waitress to help me, you know, support our family. So I was at culinary school all morning. I come home, I'd sleep an hour. I change my clothes. I go, I work till 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, come home, get up six o'clock in the morning, go to school until noon, come home, sleep an hour. And it went, went like 18 months. And then I opened a restaurant and she was serving somewhere. So I was in my restaurant all day. She was waiting tables all night. And then I was cooking all night somewhere else. We didn't see each other for years. So it was always in passing. You know, hey, how's it going? How was your day? Oh, I'm too tired to talk about it. We'll see you later. How many of you live like that? Right? And that's a destructive lifestyle. It would, I, the only reason why I did it is because I saw that there was a light at the end of my tunnel. I knew that if I could press in for 18 months and graduate school, that we could open a business and have a life. So there may be times in your business where maybe I'm going HHSs every night, right? Uh, I don't get to see my kids because I'm going HHSs every night. Yeah, but there's an end to that, right? There's an end to it because you're going to build a big team and you're going to teach your people how to do it. So anyways, connect your why to something that's extremely bigger, more profound, more prolific than just uh, making money, right? Because you can make money doing a lot of stuff right? I mean, literally you can, if money's all around you. They call it cash flow because it's flowing, right? The flow of money is literally all around you. So if you need money, believe me, if, if it was just about making money, I could go today and start a, a restaurant business or a food truck or, or set up a tent somewhere on the beach and sell donuts, right? I can make money, uh, but that's not what it's all about. It's that deeper thing. Yeah. Could I go and put up a, a 10 by 10 tent down at Clearwater beach with a donut maker and make some money yeah but i would be in that tent every day with the dough in the heat with the grease right with the customer you know to make it and that's not what i got into this life for right i don't feel like i just got in life god didn't put me into this this body uh for this season right for this this window of time to just make it that, let's stop living like that 
right? We were, look at your ketone zones. What does it say? You were made for more, right? And so when you, when you tap into that, that I was actually made for something way bigger. And guys, listen, there's no end. I don't care if you're 65 years old, that, that's not a retirement. I heard this whole interview and um, it was with Donald Trump. Now, some of you love Trump, some of you hate him. I personally thought he was, was a great president, but that's just me. Uh, I did better with him. But anyways, he was talking about his dad and he said, you know, his dad always used to say, when you tire, when you retire, you expire. And he says that he saw so many people that they'd hit 65 years old and retire and they aged very rapidly because there was no more meaning to life anymore. We don't have to live like that, right? You can refire. I look at Mike Jackson and the guy is, I don't even know how old he is, but he is like a workhorse in this industry, leading the charge, traveling, doing shows, doing, a, does he have to do any of that? No. What? Yeah, and he's working on like 20% of his heart. And you think about it. I really believe if Mike Jackson stopped and retired, he'd make it like a year and a half and that'd be it. Because what keeps him alive, what keeps him motivated, what keeps him running is the passion for life that he's helping so many people achieve their goals, that he's opening schools and businesses, he's leading a charge, that he has use, that he's useful. So don't give up. If you're old, don't give up, right? So that's, that's number one. Number one is your why. Why are you even in this business? Why did you start this business, right? So it's all good to know these things. Create a vision board. Put up your goals on, in paper. I used to think it was the dumbest thing in the world. Like my wife said, we didn't, we didn't make a, a vision board. And uh, so finally I said, well, let's just do a party. We'll get together and we'll, we'll get everybody to glue, you know, with glue sticks and magazines and construction paper, adults, you know. And it was funny because the first time we did that, we had a vision board party um, and we had all these people together. And I was watching grown people, like I'm talking like old people, right? Laying on the floor with like scissors and glue sticks and like getting excited. And I said, man, they look like a bunch of little kids. And what hit me was, is that was the last time they actually were dreamers is when they were little kids. That was the last time in their life was, was in kindergarten. Can you take my poster board? Yeah. So I ended up taking over Christina's poster board and, um, and making it mine. And so I had all kind of cool stuff. And I think if I go to my storage shed today, I probably still have two or three of my old vision boards. And then what was really fun was when you could cross off things that you did, you know, like I'm going to take a trip to Italy or I want to, I want to do this. I, I remember, I, I remember putting palm trees and dollar bills and, and like a car and, and then, and, you know, then you look fast, fast forward. We're living in Florida. We got two pools at our complex. We got everything. Most of the stuff that I put on there years and years ago, we've done. So what does that mean? doesn't mean you're at the finish line. You redo it. Okay, maybe it's to own an extra investment property, right? Maybe it's to have a couple, couple investment properties to give you more passive residual income. Maybe it's to spend more time with your, with your kids or if you have grandchildren to take your, your grandkids to Disney for a week or, or take a cruise with your family, the whole family, you know, whatever. I don't know. I can't tell you what they may do a European travel. Like my wife and I want to go back to Europe, right? We're going to down to Central America here in, in a month. So you know, these are things that have been on our goal board, our vision board, right? So listen, that is, that's great. You know, have that on your vision board. So then the next thing is, is now that you've done your vision board, hey, what about what happens next? Now you need to work your business. Okay, so now you need to work your business. So it's all good to have a vision. It's all good to have goals. Christine, give me a pen when you go in there. Um, it's all good to have visions and goals and things like that. But to have now is a strategy. Wow, a strategy. Okay. So not for some reason. I'm trying to unmute yourself. All right, thanks. Um, but anyways, is now you need a strategy. So now let's talk about how do you invite people to take a look at this business, right? And guys, if you, I'm going to be going over this like a broken record in the next couple of weeks, all right? So um, next is your strategy. How do you invite somebody to take a look? Okay, so let's talk about that. Keep it simple. All right, so I'm gonna take some notes too here. Okay, good. All right, so here we go. Keep it simple with your invite. Your invitation is not your presentation. Okay, this is a mistake that a lot of people make. You don't invite with a presentation. 
So you have to be very simple with your invite. Hey, um, do you know anybody that suffers from allergies? You know, whatever. I mean, like you got to come up with it. Hey, hey, are you looking to make any extra income? Let's say you want to lead with your business. Okay, so let's say your invite is just on the business side of things. Okay, let's talk about that. Because honestly, we can, if you can learn how to grow the business, you're going to make a ton of money in this thing. Okay, and you're going to help a lot of people out and they're going to come in at your cost. So you, so you go to the person and say, hey, do you ever look to make additional income? Yeah, if I could show you a way that you can make passive income, would it be worth, say, 25 minutes of your time just to watch a couple of quick videos with me? All right. And this is something, too, is that I, I really feel that I'm going to be working on is is making our opportunity videos and shorter segments so that you can tell the person, look, I have three videos I need you to watch. The first one's going to be on the company. The second one's going to be on the pay plan, blah, 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 blah. So, but that your invite is just a hook to get somebody to watch. That's it. What is it? I can't tell you. Like, you have to watch. I have one opportunity to make a first impression, one. So if I go to that person, well, it's this company is called Valara and we sell active pure technology and, and we, you know, we're helping with the pandemic and, and the guys gonna be like, man, I bought a, I bought an ionizer at Walmart. You know, we're, we're happy, Mark. I really don't need, you know, I'm not spending money on that thing. And I Googled you guys and, and I could find one on eBay for 600 bucks. Why would I, you know, and that's where you get all the negativity, right? Because you gave, you let, you let the cat out of the bag. So you need to go with your invite. Hey, listen, I've, I just started a brand new business and I really need your help. Can I get your opinion on it? I just want to get some feedback. Can I, can I ask you to do me a huge favor, right? Say, uh, you know, hey, Justina, can you do me a huge favor? I'm going to send you over a video. Just watch it for me. No obligation to you. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to just, I just need your opinion on it. Okay, I just need to get your opinion on it. So there, you have to work on your invite. Remember, invitation, not presentation. The, the more you say in your invite, the less money you're going to make. Again, that's a proven fact. I've proven it over the years. The more you say, the less you make. The more you say, write that down somewhere big and bold. Say, the more you say, the less you make. The more you say, the less you make. And that's a fact. Okay, so for me, I, I am a king of the takeaway, right? So like for me personally, and I learned this in door-to-door -door selling, is that, you know, it was, I had more success walking off of somebody's front porch than I did trying to force my way into their house. There's two, there's two MOs uh, of door-to-door uh, of -door salesmen. There's the salesman that forces his way through your door through tricks and things like that. Hey, let me look at your door jam. And then they walk into your door and uh, that works for some people. And then once they're in their house, then they say on the, on the, on the steps, you're a pest in the door, you're a guest type thing. Right. I never, I never did that. I was a takeaway guy. Hey, listen, I'm in your neighborhood. We're setting up your neighborhood. I just saw your neighbor, Fred. Uh, he's extremely happy with what we did for him. I just need a few minutes of your time to go over what we're doing to explain to you. So when you see trucks running around your neighborhood, you'll, you know, you'll know why I'm out here. What is it? Listen, I need, I'm not going to stand out here on your front porch and, and try to explain to you what we're doing. If you can give me 10, 15 minutes of your time, I'll just run through. I'm going to show you, I can show you. And maybe it's for you. Maybe it's not. Look, I don't want you doing it. But if you don't tell me what it is, I'm not letting you in. I'd say, okay, we'll see you. And I just turn around and walk away. And next thing you know, they're like, I'd have cars pulling up to me in the, in the street. Hey, listen, I heard, uh, I talked to Fred. He told me what you did. Can you please come back to my house? It's the reason why is because I did a walk away, right? The reason why is because I was brave enough to say, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to beg you to take a look at my business. Okay. So remember invitation, not presentation, keep it very simple. So for an HHS, you could just say, like Christina has been saying, hey, listen, my company is giving me the ability to give away a ton of free technology. All I need you to do is sit in a chair. We're going to have some food. Uh, it's only going to be maybe an hour, hour and a half. You can come and go if you, you want. Um, how it works. Yeah, we can't give you anything unless we've shown you how it works. So my obligation for my company is just to show you how it works. Listen, you've always wondered what I do anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you because our neighbors don't know what we do. I mean, they just know we're here all the time and we travel for months at a time and we go to the, the beach and stuff, right? So, hey, when our neighbors can get an inside look at what it is that I actually do for a living, there people want to know that stuff, right? So I say, hey, why don't you come over? We're going to have some guests. We're going to cook. 
Um, and keep it simple. Like my wife is an over the top entertainer, right? She wants me to like, Hey, you're a chef, Mark, make them a four course dinner. No, no, this is a HHS. We'll get you some chips and salsa, some fruit, maybe a cheese, some fruit tray, something like that. But I'm going to try to keep it as simple as I can because not everybody's a four-star chef, right? Or in my case, maybe a five-star chef, but not everybody has that capability. So if I do it and you're a guest at my party, guess what? You're in the, you need to do the same thing at your party and it's not going to duplicate because you're, that's going to keep you out of the game because you're going to say, man, I really wanted to do a healthy home show, but I can't cook like, you know, the Alfano's do. So uh, I'm just not going to do it. Right. But if, but if you go over to my house and all I put out is some nacho chips and salsa and, 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 a, and a tray with some vegetables and fruit and maybe, you know, whatever. And then you ask the person, hey, Lisa, you, can you come to my house? Yeah. Hey, can you bring over watermelon or something? Or can you, can, what do you like to eat? Hey, now listen, here's the deal. Cream. If you, yeah, like if you like coffee with cream, you better bring the cream That's because, because I don't, we don't use it. So, um, you know, and then they, they get some of the like commit. Oh yeah, I can bring, I can bring some cream with me or I, whatever. Right. So, so keep your invites happy, exciting, no obligation. Don't make it like, oh, you know, and look at your body language because I've had people come up to me like, oh, I've never wants to join my business, you know? And I'm like, I wouldn't join anything you did. I mean, you don't look excited. You're not, you're not uh, happy. You have no joy. Right. So why would I join you? Oh, can you kind of, why? So I'd be as miserable as you are. No, I'm not coming. But if you're excited about it, listen, I'm excited. You know, I'm, we, our, our lives have been changed. We're no longer using chemicals. I mean, they can see it on you, right? If you're excited, they see it on you. They want to, and it's like this curiosity thing. Well, hey, what do you have to lose? What do I have to lose, right? Now, get them to your house. Get them to the house. Get them to the presentation. Get them in front of that video, like Greg and Matt are doing. Do virtual. If, they, if the person's like, Hey, you know what? When I go virtual, if you go virtual, like what they're doing, and now you implement this 40 minute video. So all you're doing is intro and outro. That's it. Oh, and you're just sitting there. I mean, man, you could put the video and go in the other room and, and play PlayStation for 40 minutes and then come back. Right. Take a walk around your neighbor, walk your dog. Nobody knows where you're at. It's on. It's virtual. Right. But the end of that virtual meeting, you think about this. I can now go coast to coast, border to border. I could be doing a virtual meeting where I have somebody in Puerto Rico, somebody in Canada, somebody in California, somebody in New York watching all at the same time. You can't do that in, in the in-home, but I could do in-home and virtual, right? I could say, hey, Saturday night, I'm doing a meeting at my house. I need you to be there, right? And you get your guest list down. And the Saturday night, like we did, two people show up. That's fine because I still have the capability of bringing in three, four, five more people virtually. And it doesn't even have to be at my live event. I don't have to get out a camera or hold up my phone while I'm presenting. I just, I just text them. Hey, hey, Frank, listen, I need you to jump on this. Uh, I'm going to send you a quick link. It's a 40 minute video or 12 minute video. I need you to watch it. I'm going to call you as soon as you're done watching it. I need your, your email address, your, your address, your, your phone number. I'm going to mark you down as a guest at my event. And then I'm going to give you a bunch of free op options here. All right. So how many of us can commit to start doing this kind of stuff, right? So invite, keep it super simple, keep it exciting, keep it energetic. You know, this is something I want you to see. Choose, you know, hey, you could just, you could spend the next week. If you like, look, let's just say I, I, you don't have a house, you don't, whatever. Let's just say you live in a van, possibly down by the river, right? And so you don't, which actually is a goal of mine. I'd like to live in a van down by the river, like just a really, really nice van. But, um, but that's a whole other story. But let's just say you're, you don't have anything. I can't do it. I live in a van. I don't have internet connection, whatever. Then focus on inviting people to take a look at my business opportunity. Take, just, just focus on that. Hey, listen, if, if I could show you a quick video, if I, I use my, I have one I recorded, I put it out with every email, get on there and say, listen, if I could just send you this link, I, I know it's like an hour long, um, but if you could just watch this one video for me, please, like I'm begging you watch it at the end. I'm going to call you and see if you have any questions. That's it. I, 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 look, my, my company pays me a lot of money to have people watch this video. Can you please watch this video? Okay. And, um, and then just get them on there. Right. So number one, what's your, uh, you, can, you know, you can also say this is a brand new video, um, you know, it just came out. Can you tell me what you like best or if you need to change? Yeah. So for those of you in here, Christina said, you know, you could tell people we have a brand new video. 
I'd like you to just check it out for me. Tell me what you like best. Tell me what you would change about it. Um, can you give me some notes on it? Please take notes. It's 40 minutes. I'm, you know, like this means a lot to me because we're going to use this to help launch a new phase of our, of our business, right? So, um, but anyways, you know, this is, this is where I'm going to be focusing my training now. Um, and not, not all the time, but like I know Tuesday night, Pastor Eric asked me to train. And I really want to focus on the jumpstart aspect of your business. What's the reason why you're doing this thing? Have you made a list yet? Making a list should be like number two thing to do. Have you, do you even have a physical list of names of people? Do you have a list? Just a quick question. Do you have a list? <laughs> okay. So um, all the videos are in. Um, so we have a question, Christina, where are the videos? So videos are all over the place. They're in Coda and the Coda app. We post them on uh, all the videos. So all our videos are on. The new video hasn't come out yet. So it'll be released very soon uh, with the HHS. I have a 12 minute video I do. Every email you get at the, from me at the bottom of the email, it'll say there's a link to a YouTube video. That's my YouTube channel. You can subscribe to it. I put different content up there. It's not all Valar related but doesn't matter because I do my, put my trainings on there, put videos on there, put how to clean your living water, how I, all that stuff. So get on there and look around, put like, subscribe, you know, hit the bell, whatever I know. I'm not a YouTuber, but, um, but yeah. So anyways, the videos are great, but let's go back to your list. You have a list, right? Have you made a list of people and don't just say, yeah, here's my list and hold up your cell phone. No, no. Like take your cell phone, and then, and then just get a sheet. And, I, and I, 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 we used to do this, these fun things where you take a piece of paper and you draw like a, a X, or not X, like a cross, right? So I just go, like I put a down line and then a cross line and make four quadrants, right? So you do four, just like that, four quadrants, right? And then you put at the top, you put quadrant number one, right in church, um, quadrant number two, work, quadrant number three is family, and then um, clubs, groups, friends, whatever. So friends. Okay. So like you, you know, you you write your list. You put the quadrants. Then you put one through ten in each quadrant. And then you go down through your list and you say, okay, I need ten people. You write it down. Like at a church with that, that are not in the business, right? And then you start to, maybe you need to get a memory jogger out, right? Maybe you need to start thinking with a memory jogger, like, you know, when it goes to work, colleagues, different things, like, because my work can come, can be outside of my sphere of work. Let's say I'm a property manager at a, an apartment complex. So my work could be the maintenance guy. It could be the guy that cleans the pool. It could be the, you know, it could be all around. It could be somebody who works in the office. It could be the accounting department. It could be the upper management. So I, can I get 10 names from work, right? How about my friends? So I have 10 friends. No, but I mean, like I could probably try to find, you know, 10 people that I've had uh, uh, relationships with or, or, you know what I mean, like contact with over the years by going through my, my Facebook friends, right? Facebook, I have 42,000 friends. I don't even know any of them, right? So if you could go into that list and pull out 10, write them down. You could go to your to your family. I, hopefully we have 10 family members, right? That, that, that haven't seen the business because most of us are too ashamed to show our, our friends and family what we do. So write down your 10 family members. At the end of that exercise, you got 40 names on a list. 40 names can keep you busy for years. Right. 40, 40 names could could make you half a million dollars in the next two years. If you if you because you don't know who's in that 40 name stack. Right. It could be Mike Jackson. It could be Dr. Eric. It could be it could be me and Christina. It could be somebody. Somebody's got those names on their list. And listen, guys, people are looking. You know how I know? Because I'm getting bombarded with people with every business under the sun now. I mean, you know, and it's all stupid stuff, literally. So, I mean, I'm getting bombarded with stuff. It's like, there's no life to these businesses, but yet people are, are, are staking their names and reputation on it. Hey, guess what? If they're willing to do that, then they should be willing to look at what I got. Here's the other thing. How about somebody calls you to look at their business? You say, fine, I'll look at what you got, but you have to look at what I got. All right? Because it's going to happen. You know, telemarketers call me. You know, hey, I want to give you, uh, you know, uh, whatever. You know, I'll, I'll fix my car warranty. 
Well, hey, look, I'll look at your car warranty program, but can you jump on a website? What, what, what state are you in? Oh, you know, you're not even in the United States. Well, then you hang up, right? But if you get somebody, because it happens, I'm calling it from Spectrum, right? Um, call about your cable. Hey, Spectrum, that office is like a block from my house. Why do you work at Spectrum? Well, how long have you been there? You know, blah, 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 blah. And you start to get, if, if they're not willing to talk to you, then just hang up the phone. But there's, op, there, we have opportunity all around us. How about this? I have people who say, well, I want to do trade shows. I want to do county fairs and all that stuff, right? Do them. I know Kim just finished too, right? Do the fair. But at the same time, you'll have a lot of success at a, at a county fair or trade show by walking through the show and collecting cards from every vendor in that show. Because when you're, when, especially at a vendor fair, those people are entrepreneurial. They've already started a business. They're selling a quilt or they're selling uh, whatever. You know, they're selling salad shooters and, and Ginzu knives and, and, uh, and peelers, right? So if I go through and I grab a card from everybody in there and then I put together a nice either email or I just call them and I say, hey, uh, Charlie, I saw you at the, at the um, Washington County Fair. You were the guy, I was the guy uh, in the booth. We were selling air, the air, water and laundry. I know that you're already in a business where you do HVAC uh, repair and cleaning. I think our businesses may have a mutual uh, benefit. Like what we do could definitely help you and what, what you do could possibly help us because you know, hey, we're in houses all the time and there's a lot of times where people need your services. So let's work a deal out. You know, can I, would you take 20 minutes or so? Can we get together? Can I buy you a cup of coffee? Can I show you via a Zoom meeting what it is that I exactly do and how it can benefit your business? So you don't even have to spend the money to set up at a trade show. You don't have to. You could go through your next event, because people always ask me, Mark, will you split shows with me? Can we do it? No, I don't want to split a show with you. Just come, work it, meet, get contacts, get leads, walk through the venue, talk to people. I mean, we had a lady at our Pittsburgh Home and Garden show who um, bought personal units because she saw all of our people wearing personal units and she was uh, selling hot dogs at the, at, the, uh, at the concession stand. And was like one of every time I was on the stage doing a, doing a presentation, because we did live presentations, this lady was like, well, ah, you know, like pointing at us and sitting in the crowd. And then I had other booths coming out. All right. So you, you're not limited to the guests. So start opening up, like unscrew your head and tell your brain, OK, brain, let's start thinking outside of this box. And, and realize that there's literally opportunities all around you. There's people that are probably making money, but they're not making what they can make in um, one year. Yeah. So anyways, what Christina says, there's people who are, who maybe they're making money, maybe they're, they love their business, but they're, let, let, let's just sum it up. A lot of people keep their options open for making additional income. So ask them that. Say, hey, listen, um, do you keep your options op open? I know that you're doing these trade shows, I know you're traveling, and you know, they may look extremely successful but they may not be making any money at these shows, right? Maybe they've done six shows in a row and it's completely struck out. And they are keeping their options open. And then you say, do you know anybody in the school systems? Do you know anybody who has a church? Do you know anybody who, how about this? When you guys go out to eat uh, at a restaurant, they have a stack of cards for the manager there, right? Grab a card and then call back and say, listen, I was eating in your restaurant. On, and don't call them during the dinner rush. Call them in the afternoon, early. Call them around, you know, one o'clock, not even that because of lunch. If they don't, if they're, let's say it's a dinner only, call them around one o'clock. If it's other than that, go around maybe three, okay? And you call the person up around three o'clock and say, listen, I was in your restaurant. Hey, is, is this uh, Boyd? Yeah, you're the manager of the local pizza joint. Yeah, great. Well, listen, I was at your shop. I just want to tell you, my family loved it, right? It's the best cauliflower pizza I ever ate um well thank you so much i really appreciate it yeah we plan on coming back the fact is my son's birthday we're gonna we're probably gonna use you for a huge party oh that's great you know thank you so much listen the reason why i'm calling is i'm local and i run a business and i think that my business could mutually uh benefit your business could i come in maybe late for lunch i'll eat some pizza there and then just have maybe 25 minutes of your time to show you what it is that i've got what is it? Well, I could show you when I get there. It's kind of like the pizza. You know what I mean? I can't give you the pizza over the phone. You're never going to have a, a pizza experience over, over the cell phone, right? You need to actually eat it. And that's all I'm asking you to do.
is just eat it with me, right? Let's sit down together. You enjoy the experience of it. It may or may not be for you, Boyd, but guess what? You know a lot of people and you could open up a lot of doors for me. And guess what? I know a lot of people. So I can start diverting traffic into your business. See, it's not all about what's in it for me. It's how can I help that local business owner become more successful? What I have, Christina, what I have could actually add to what you're currently doing, right? It could be another point of revenue for you. I want you to think about this. Let's say if I go to a local restaurant or listen, start, start solving problems for business owners. Don't go into a business saying, what's in it for me? Say, what can I do to help this business owner? Okay, so I'll give you one and, and, and add value to that person. Don't just go in trying to get, listen, I owned restaurants for years and nothing was worse than the, I'm busy, I'm in the kitchen, I'm, I got a dinner rush that's coming, um, all these different things are happening. And guess what? Here comes the salesman. And look, I don't want to deal with this guy. You know what I mean? It's like, I just don't want to deal with you. And I would go out and I was already, my defenses were up. You know, I'm already buying my food from, from this pur purveyor and I'm buying from this local farm. And I got the Cisco guy there. Oh, he wants to sell me frozen goods. I don't want to buy your frozen stuff. And I would just, you know, that's it. And then I had this one Cisco guy who used to come all the time. I mean, I don't know, he must've come to my, my business for a year. And, and, but he was always bringing me stuff. Hey, Mark, I want you to try it. And a lot of time I'd laugh at it. I'm like, bro, I don't use like frozen veal patties. You know, come on, man. Um, I said, you, I, I say, Chris, listen, if you want to get my business, you need to start thinking big, think outside of the box. You, you need to, you need to hit me with something. Right. So finally, one day he goes, Hey, why don't you come up to my corporate office and we're, we'll have our chefs just roll out a bunch of free stuff for you. Hey, I, I like to eat. I was 300 pounds. So I'm like, sure, let's go. And my wife and I and a bunch of people went and man, this guy went next level on us. Right. He had like escargot and all this caviar and like, I mean, like they went, they pulled out the top. This is stuff they probably don't even sell. Right. But they went next level on me. And uh, and so finally, I found one pasta product that I really, really liked. It was a sachetti thing, like a little sachet with pear and cheese. And I could put it with a nice gorgonzola cream sauce. I loved it. And uh, I said, okay, that's all. I, that's all. That's it. Just send me that pear and cheese. So he, for about three weeks, he sent me that. And then he calls me. He's like, Mark, here's the deal. You need a minimum order of like 500 bucks. Those things are like 60 bucks. Um, who are you buying your toilet paper? Who are you buying this, this, and this stuff that he knew that I was buying anyway. And I shifted my, my business into that guy's business. Consistent, persistent effort for, for a year. Another guy tried to sell me point of sale in my very first restaurant. And I had a, I had a cash register, okay. And a little credit card reader. And he used to come in once a month, once a month, once a month for like two years. And when I opened my, my, my big restaurant, we probably spent $30,000 on a point of sale system. And he got the deal consistent, persistent effort. And he met a need that I, that I had. So when you go into that business owner, you fill a need that they have. Now, I want you to think about this one. What, what is it that people drink in a restaurant now? And maybe I'm the only one, but what is it that 99% of people get in a restaurant to drink? Water with lemon. It's a lot, it's a loser for a restaurant owner, right? Whole table comes in. What would you like to drink? Water with lemon, iced tea, coffee, whatever. And there's, and there's no money to be made. I got to cut, you know, lemons are expensive, right? And if you're like my wife, I don't think she eats what does water. I think she like likes lemonade, okay? Because she'll get like 65 lemon slices in a, in a, for a glass of water, right? And so think about the losses that that business is incurring now, right? So how about this? Um, how about it if I could set up a restaurant with living water and they could have pitchers in there that are marked different pH levels, you know, pH 9.598, um, pre-made in a cooler, ready to go, or even get bottles, right? You can buy empty bottles, nice bottles, and put their label on it, right? The Vineyards Treachery, uh, you know, Living Water, 9.5, and have them lined up. You know, don't make too much. You tell your staff, only make so many. And when I come in and I say, yeah, just give me water with lemon, uh, would you like Living Water? 
uh, today? Or did you like just the normal tap water that comes out of the sewer? Oh, uh, well, sure, what's this living water? Well, you know, it's, it's and you have, a, maybe you have like a little card that you hand to people. It's something we just implemented. It's, it's um, we get all the impurities out of it. It tastes like glacial spring water, it's alive. It's this, this, and this. And then all of a sudden the person's like, no, for two bucks, I mean, hey, you know what? I'm gonna buy whatever it is, San Pellegrino for $4 for Italian, you know, water and, and make it cheaper than a soda. You added value to a restaurant just now. You just added value. So maybe you go into a, a smaller place and um, maybe you go into like a smaller area where like a gym and they're doing all their own laundry. If I could add value to that person, say, listen, guys, I mean, you're washing all these towels, like person uses it, they sweat, they wipe off their forehead, they wipe off the bench, they throw it in the basket and you're loading that full of chemicals. It's costing you money, hot water. If I could show you a way to eliminate all those costs, I'll even work with you on the price of this thing, right? It's normally 1500 bucks. You have three washing machines. I'll, I'll sell you a three pack. Uh, I could let you join my business, right? So now you're adding value to that local business owner you're not looking to get something for yourself. You're adding value to that person. They're gonna now spend their money to, to help themselves. It does, who cares about you? As a business owner, I don't care about you, man. I got 30 employees. I got, a, I got rent that's seven, 8,000 bucks a month. I've got, you know, I've got overhead and actually seven, 8,000 is cheap. So I got rent at 10 grand a month. I got overhead. I got my electric bill, the roof leaks. I got bugs coming in the back door. I got to call in this guy. I got the health inspector coming. I don't want to deal with spending money. I want you to show me a way that's going to save me money and make me money. And I'm in. You come in. And then you, then you, once you're in, you say to the person, well, listen, you're buying living water anyway. Why don't we just set you up on a pack? You can use the laundry at your house. Your wife will love it. You know, your husband or wife will love it. And um, whoever does the laundry, right? Your maid um, will love it. But then here at the restaurant, we can set you up with two air and surface pros to protect the people. We'll put a sticker on the front door and you'll have the living water service. Who's, who's thought of stuff like that, right? Nobody, I have, and that's why I'm successful in the business, right? Because I think, I don't think inside the box, I think outside of the box. So just keep that in mind. I know we only got two minutes, but um, go over what I just went over. Hopefully you took some good notes. I'm gonna post this because I did record it. And I'm seeing something. Yeah. All right. What? I am busy right now. Okay. I want to see. All right. So anyway, um, so anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and post this up. And um, but start with the basics, guys. Number one, I, I'd like you all to write down the reason why you started in this business. Write it down. Make it plain. Number two, make a list. Give me a list of like 40 names of people that you want to contact, and they're out there. Don't don't ever tell me you don't know 40 people. Don't ever do that because all you have to do is get into your car and take a drive and do something different. Go buy a bowling alley on a Wednesday night when they're having a league. All right. And you'll meet 40 new people. And we, and we, you could, for us, we go to Disneyland right here in Florida and we meet I, uh, hundreds and hundreds of people in line because you're in line for an hour and a half. We meet new contacts every day. Um, they're all around us. Make sure you have your business card handy. Make sure you, you, know, you have a way to show somebody a video. Hey, hey, you're in line for an hour. You mind taking a look at this video? But Mark, I don't go to Disneyland. Great. Then do you go grocery shopping? Right? Do you, do you walk through a grocery store? When you go to the grocery store, is it in a strip mall? Like most down here in Florida, a lot of our stores are in a strip mall. In that strip mall, there's, there's 25 businesses. Why, why couldn't I go early to go grocery shop and start at the first business and just go through, don't even ask them nothing. Just go and collect business cards. That's it. Hey, can I get, can I get one of your cards? Yeah. I'm looking to whatever, I'm looking to get a wax, you know, I don't know, whatever the heck people do. Uh, I want to buy some pizza for a party or I want to buy some, you know, used furniture, whatever these stores are. Right. And so then you collect these business cards come home, have a strategy of setting appointments with these people, all right? So anyways, it's 12 o'clock. Hopefully you gained something from that. And um, 
we'll just pray over you. So Father God, I thank you for everybody on this call. Lord, I pray that the second half of this year is greater than the first half, that there'll be no discouragement, there'll be no setbacks, that, that we go from glory to glory, victory to victory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, I'll see you on uh, Tuesday. Who's going to be the first to send us their why? And who's going to be the first to send us their why? So go ahead, write your why out, send it over to Christina and I on the email, and uh, we'll see you. All right, so that's it.